if you are listening to this, it means that we made it. It means that we made it. College football season starts today. It is time. Wisconsin Badgers football is taking the field at Camp Randall Stadium tonight against Western Michigan. And so we got to get my not so bold <laughs> predictions. At least I don't think that they're bold. Apparently, according to some other people, they're they're bold. I'm, I'm boldly down on this team. We got to break it down. We got to tell you what players I'm most excited for this season. We've talked about all the guys, but I want to give you my keys and my three wishes for this Wisconsin Badgers football season. We're breaking it down here on the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Good morning, and thank you for enjoying it with the Six Pack. The Scotty Six Pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. I'm your host, Kedrick Stumbrus. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrus, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. While you are here, smash that like button to show your excitement over the Wisconsin Badgers football season finally starting. If you are watching on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty Six Pack. Hit the subscribe button so we can continue to grow the show. You can also listen to us on Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen to podcasts. Look, it's time. We are here. And I strangely, I don't want to say that I've been the voice of reason lately, or I feel like I've been the voice of reason lately, but there was a level of cynicism about the Wisconsin Badgers football team headed into this season. I think that was right. I think it is a fair assessment that there was a level of cynicism at first this offseason where people clearly had their expectations too high for the 2023 season. And so everyone tried to be more reserved and swayed back. And I think maybe swayed a little too far back at first. But now, now that we've gotten closer and closer to the season, the hype train is, is approaching some pretty breakneck speeds. And... I think people are back, not everybody, but like the online Wisconsin Badgers diehard commentariat is starting to earnestly ask and earnestly say, is it crazy to think that this team is going to beat Alabama? Yeah, it is. I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> I, I am I am more down on this team than I, I think a good handful of people are uh, for the Wisconsin Badgers. But let's let's start with I got my my predicted team defensive MVP for this Wisconsin Badgers football season, my predicted team offensive MVP, and then a player to watch on both sides of the ball as well. Because I think the my my picks for offensive and defensive MVP are maybe too obvious. Uh, we're gonna do that. My three wishes for the Wisconsin Badgers football team this season, and then get into a little bit of a schedule prediction game. Um. First, the the team defensive MVP. It it has to be Hunter Wooler. It just has to be. I don't. I, I, I guess I shouldn't say I don't know how you don't pick Hunter Wooler because I I could see you making cases for for other guys. I could see you making a case for Jake Cheney. I could see you making a case for uh, Ricardo Holman. I could see you making a case for even if they're all Peterson. Peterson. But Hunter Wooler is such a unique, versatile talent on this defense that he really makes this whole unit work right with the way that Mike Tressel wants to be multiple, wants to use different formations, different sets of personnel to get his best 11 players on the field at all times. Hunter Wooler is key to that. And that versatility is going to be key to Hunter Wooler playing in the NFL. Hunter Wooler last year, uh, according to some, some research, I uh, saw Dylan Graff pull um, from Pro Football Focus. Hunter Wooler last season in 2023 played 50% of his snaps from the box as a strong safety. He played 30% as a free safety and another 20% lined up in the slot as a nickel corner. He's real versatile. He he can do a lot of things that nobody else on this team can do quite as well. Look, Max Luffy can play in the slot, but like Funner Wooler can play <laughs> both the safety and in the slot. 
I would have him play both. And that versatility, if you look at the Green Bay Packers and what they are searching for in their defensive backs, right? That versatility is going to be key for Hunter Roller playing in the NFL at the next level. And I'm really excited to watch him play in the NFL at the next level. Uh, as I was preparing for this, I kind of just quick Google searched like NFL draft projections for Hunter Roller. And I figured I wasn't going to find much because he's not going to be a first round guy. Um, but the projections I found were like sixth round, third day, potential undrafted free agent. Like absolutely not. Clearly, when you when you start reading things that are published more recently, um, things that are published from <laughs> what I quickly realized were more reputable outlets. They're saying like, no, nah, he's he's going to be at he's going to be a day two pick. Hunter Waller is going to play in the National Football League, and I think do more than just get a cup of coffee. He He is too versatile to not get a legitimate shot in the league. He is too physical to not get a legitimate shot in the league. He is too good in coverage to not get a legitimate shot in the National Football League. Hunter Roller is going to be this team's MVP, and I'm really excited to see what he does after he leaves Wisconsin. Um, my Wisconsin Badgers defensive player to watch is John Pius. I... <laughs> I maybe I should knock on wood, because the last time I was really excited, I said I was really excited to see a... a player or this season it was james thompson jr and then they died um not literally obviously but i i am really excited to watch john pius this season and i i think he has a really compelling story at linebacker he flashed a ton of production at the fcs level for william and mary you know is setting uh coming in at what second place in, in program history in total tackles for loss in only three seasons at William and Mary. I think he showed in fall camp that he is a guy who deserves to be on a big 10 caliber football team, like, like Wisconsin, a guy who was named to the senior bowl watch list a year ago. And in their scout team is really good. Their, their scout team is really good. They are really good at finding guys who deserve a shot in the NFL who at least deserve further analysis from guys in the NFL. And, and of course, John Pius is on the Senior Bowl watch list again this season. I'm excited to see John Pius play this year. And there's an outside shot that he's this team's leading tackler. And if that's the case, what a story for him. What, what a story for him to come into Madison after three years at FCS William & Mary to be the leading tackler on a Big Ten football team, that that would, that would be awesome. And I, I hope that he has a standout season. I hope that the injury bug doesn't bite him uh, and that he gets a chance to go to the senior bowl, senior bowl show off what he can do, uh, and, and potentially get himself picked up in the seventh round of the NFL draft, uh, potentially get himself on a UDFA deal, uh, and give himself a shot to, to find a place in the National Football League because that would be, that would be an awesome story. Um, my team offensive MVP is going to be Will Pauling. I, I'm predicting Will Pauling to have a, a huge role in this team this year, believe it or not. You should believe it because it's really obvious. Um, he's just an athletic monster. I, I mean, performed at such a high level last season in his first season in power conference football. He started all 13 games in the slot, led the team with 74 catches, Right, 837 yards and six touchdowns. Those 74 catches are fifth all time in program history. He was tied for the national lead with third down converting catches. He had, I think it was the fifth most um, catches on third down in the country. He's really good. Phil Longo loves those slot receivers. He loves those receivers that can co cover the middle of the field. And because we feel good about some of the other players on the boundary, like Bryson Green, who I think are going to be um, shadow covered by other defensive backs, I think that'll give Will Pauling an even greater opportunity to feast over the middle of the field this season. Uh, a player who might get the opportunity 
to feast over the middle of the field if it's not Will Pauling. It's my offensive player to watch for the Wisconsin Badgers this football season, and that's Tucker Ashcraft. I think we saw good flashes from him as a true freshman when he was thrust into a starting tight end role a year ago because every other tight end <laughs> in Madison stopped playing football last August. Um, we saw real flashes from Tucker Ashcraft. He is a player that came with a ton of pedigree as a 2023 recruit. And when there's not a ton of other competition there at that spot, I think that he has a real chance to stand out. And if it's not Tucker Ashcraft, I think it's Jackson McGowan. Um, and maybe the, the staff is a little bit more familiar with Jackson McGowan. You know, they were more familiar with him going back to uh, the Luke Fickle staff recruiting him to Cincinnati before he ultimately committed uh, to LSU after the fickle staff decided to take the job at UW. But I think one of these tight ends is certainly going to be a player to watch there. There was just not enough talent in the tight end room last year to produce much of anything, right? They produced fewer than 300 yards in, in receiving from the entirety of the tight end room a season ago. And that's just not really Phil Longo's MO. So I almost wonder if Phil Longo will be tempted to <laughs> kind of overcompensate for, for the lack of tight end production a season ago and, and try to go to some of these young guys, uh, test, test them early, figure out what, what they might have in them early, early on in the season. It, it would be great to see if, if Tucker Ashcraft can get going tonight against Western Michigan. It'd be great to see if Jackson McGowan can get going tonight, uh, against Western Michigan. It would be really exciting to see, um, all that happen. Uh, my three wishes for the Wisconsin Badgers football team in 2024. I, I am thinking about making this a, a recurring segment, so, something like this. I did three things I hope to see it, for, for the game preview yesterday. Um, I'm workshopping this. If, if, you, if you have thoughts about three wishes, something else, uh, let, let me know down in the comments. Uh, I would love to workshop this into, into a segment, game preview, season preview, something of the sort. Um, first, Hunter Waller does not lead the team in tackles. <laughs> uh, led the team in tackles. 120 tackles last season was first by a 40 tackle margin to Jake Cheney. Uh, if Hunter Waller is leading this team in tackles by a margin of 40, this is not going to be a very good football team. It's just not. Uh, you need those inside linebackers to do more this season. You need Jake Cheney to do more this season. You need John Pius to do more this season. I am looking forward to watching them play. And. If that means we get to see more of them as Hunter Wooler does not tackle as much, that is great. The less involved in tackling Hunter Wooler is, that means the better uh, the corners are in coverage. That means the better that the linebackers are in coverage over the middle. That means the better the defensive line and the linebackers are at plugging running lanes. No more tackles for Hunter Wooler. <laughs> Please. Uh, my second wish for this Wisconsin Badgers football season is Chesma Lucy stays healthy. He is a joy to watch run and was a joy to watch last season in the four games where he was reviving his career. Basically he had six yards per carry in the four games that Chesma Lucy was able to play last season before breaking his leg. I would like to see that throughout the entirety of the season. I would like to see that complemented with to Walker throughout the entirety of the season. And if that means we get a little bit less of Dylan Jones, a little bit less of Darian Dupree, like so be it so that we can see this guy who has gave all that he can, all that he's got to football over the last, however many six years between Clemson and Wisconsin injuries and injuries, a pandemic. He's given it all. He's given everything that he can, and I would love to see Chesma Lucy rewarded for that with a huge season and a healthy season before he leaves Madison. My third wish for this Wisconsin Badgers football season is for injury luck on the defensive line <laughs> because that is the only way this team is not going to fall apart. <laughs> oh, 
gosh. Uh, <laughs> I, I am just beating a dead horse here. Uh, the defensive line is not good. It's not. It's not good. And that is where we're going to get into um, <laughs> me being more down on this team in just a minute here than I think other people are. I think other people are really, really, um, understating or uh, yeah, we're going to go with understand <laughs> understating the talent gap between Wisconsin's defensive line and some of the other offensive fronts that they are, that defensive line is going to face and the talent gap between Wisconsin's defensive line and opposing defensive lines. I don't think that some people in the commentary at totally understand that like this is one a depth issue but two an overarching talent issue and the the depth behind the starters which already have a questionable level of talent to, to be a starting defensive line if, if you if you really think that this wisconsin Badgers team can do something like win more than eight games which i get into it a little bit i think is a crazy number um you think a lot more highly of this defensive line than I do. That 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 is that's that's just the case. You you have to think a lot more highly of this defensive line than I do. Otherwise, the prediction does not make sense because these college football games are one of the trenches. The game is about blocking and tackling. And Wisconsin does not have freaks up front to compete with some of the real contenders that appear on this schedule, like Oregon, like Penn State. Like Alabama, <laughs> it's going to be hard if you get even more thin at defensive line than you already are. If Ben Barton goes down, that's rough, man. If Daryl Peterson goes down, man, that's rough because also you, I, I think the outside linebacker room is better than it was a year ago, but like you are at the point where you are borrowing defensive linemen to play outside linebacker and outside linebackers to play defensive line. It's not good. That could become a real problem really quickly uh, for this Wisconsin Badgers football team this year. It is scheduled prediction time. Um, but before we get into that, I want to tell you about my friends over at TickPick because TickPick is where I am going to get all of my tickets for Wisconsin Badgers football this season. Um, I am really excited. Because TickPick does not have service fees, does not have delivery fees. TickPick is where I go to get the best deals on tickets, no matter what I'm going to. If it's a sporting event, if it is a concert, if it is a comedy show, TickPick has your back. I, I, I am looking right now at, at TickPick for, for tickets to this game tonight. Oh, right now, when I'm looking at it, you can get into the game for 7 Dollars now. Keep in mind, I'm recording this on on August 24th. But tonight, wink, wink, August 30th, I'm looking at being able to get into the game for seven bucks. Plus, if you use my link in the podcast podcast description, if you use my link that's on the screen now, I'm gonna save you ten bucks on your first qualifying purchase from TickPick. So go to the TickPick TickPick app. That's T I C K P I C K. Download it in the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Download the TickPick app, save 10 bucks on your first purchase on me, and never pay service fees, never pay delivery fees. The price is going to be what you see on the screen. The price you see is the price you get on tickets to every event you go to from here on out. Download the TickPick app. That's T-I-C-K-P-I-C-K. Click my link in the podcast description. Save 10 bucks on your first order. All right, let's do it. We are going to talk about Wisconsin Badgers their schedule schedule prediction time. Here we go. Wisconsin is going to start the season with a dub tonight. I, I, I do really believe that Wisconsin is going to beat Western Western Michigan tonight. Uh, if you want to know why I think Wisconsin is going to beat Western Michigan tonight, you can go into yesterday's episode, wherever you are listening to this, wherever you are watching this uh, on your podcast platform choice or at youtube.com slash at Scotty six pack. Um, find my Wisconsin Badgers, Western Michigan breakdown episode. Talk about 
all the reasons why I think Wisconsin is going to beat Western Michigan in that one. Uh, next, I think Wisconsin is going to beat South Dakota. Wisconsin is going to start the season 2-0, take that win over South Dakota. South Dakota is not a, a team to, to sneeze at. The Coyotes are not an FCS program to mess around with. Uh, ranked fifth in the preseason FCS poll. And they have a pretty stout defense, um, but not really an offense that is going to do much for you. Um, so I, I think Wisconsin will, will have a solid test for its offense against a, a good FCS defense. Um, and then hopefully be able to have its defense really shut down this, this FCS offense, uh, overall against, um, South Dakota. So I, I have Wisconsin at two wins over Western Michigan and South Dakota. One Wisconsin hosts Alabama. I want you to remember that I am tapping the sign now. No, the Wisconsin Badgers will not beat Alabama. Wisconsin Badgers are not going to beat Bama. I have heard this over and over again about how great of a chance Wisconsin has to beat Bama this year because there is a coaching change, because Nick Saban is gone, because they've had all these transfers out. Do you realize that like all these players that left Bama were replaced by other players that are recruiting at national championship caliber levels of roster? They, they replaced players who left Bama with players from Michigan, from Ohio State, from even Penn State. And yeah, I know there's plenty of Penn State haters and, and doubters, but like they recruit at, at a level that is above what Wisconsin recruits at. And, and you just have to deal with that because that's just a fact. <laughs> I, I like I, I don't create the recruiting rankings. That's that's just true. Um they Alabama has rebuilt this roster in a way that is impressive considering all, all that they lost. Um, I have seen at least one other show cast doubt on the quality of Alabama's offensive line. To which I understand because you did lose J.C. Latham at right tackle to, to the National Football League. You did, however, keep your true freshman starting left tackle, Caden Proctor. You you jettisoned your starting center because you didn't like them <laughs> to, to Ohio State. Um, and so I understand why people might come to the conclusion that based on things that they read, things that they hear, that Alabama's offensive line is, like, mediocre. I think that people need to adjust their expectations when they are reading content about Alabama versus when they are reading content about a team like Wisconsin. I think we can agree that Wisconsin and Alabama do not exist in the same tier of college football right now. So when an outlet, a Southern-based outlet, an Alabama-based outlet, Writes about was uh, writes about Alabama's offensive line having questions. That is a different thing than having questions about Wisconsin's offensive line, about having questions about Wisconsin's defensive line. A, an Alabama offensive line with questions is still probably a pretty dang good line. And Wisconsin's defensive line is not good, is not good. I understand that Alabama lost some skill talent, lost Isaiah Bond. I understand that. I understand that he went to Texas. My in-laws are Texas fans and Texas alums. I, I hear about it. Heard about it as soon as it happened. I understand that. But you still have very talented guys like like Kobe out there. <laughs> you you have Kalen DeBoer, who turned Michael Penix into <laughs> whether deserve it or not by the Atlanta Falcons. I mean, a pre he turned him into a premier draft pick turns Jake Hayner in, into a rosterable NFL quarterback from out of Fresno state. 
and I think is very poised to do similar work with Jalen Milrow for, from Alabama because Michael Penix can, can sling the deep ball, right? It's what he was pretty dang proficient at last year under Caleb DeBoer. Obviously, some other things too. But like, hey, uh, if Kellen DeBoer can get real, real production out of Michael Penix slinging the deep ball, imagine what he can do with Jalen Milrow, who can throw the heck out of the ball like Uncle Rico over those mountains, man. I, I don't think that game's going to be close. I, I really don't. I think there are too many fans who are like, I just want, I just want to be close. I don't want to get blown out. Like you might get blown out, and I, I think you have to be okay with that. The, this Wisconsin roster is a rebuild. This is not the Wisconsin roster that went to back to back to back New Year's Six games. It doesn't look anything like that right now. The Wisconsin roster is in flux. It, it stinks, but like you, you're not at the level. Maybe this is a good measuring stick against next year's trip to Tuscaloosa to figure out how quickly you are moving ahead. All right, after that, um, the Wisconsin Badgers are going to play USC. And while I think that this game is winnable, uh, there, there's definitely a bigger question mark here than, than uh, an exclamation point next to a W. I think it is unfortunate that in one of the four games that you are going to be an underdog in between USC, Alabama, uh, Penn State, and Oregon, the game you are going to be the smallest dog in, you are playing on the road. I think Wisconsin fans would much, much rather get USC at home and one of Penn State, Oregon, Bama on the road. Because then your most winnable game that you're a dog in is going to be in your own house, at least. I think Wisconsin still wins this game, but I think it is close. Um, and it might be a weird game where, you know, we expect... Oh, Wisconsin runs the air raid. Oh, Lincoln Riley has this great offense year over year that's that's built on elite quarterback play. But frankly, I think Lincoln Riley's offense this year might be built out from its transfer running back out of uh, Mississippi State instead. I, I, I think that is a much better better chance of happening of of Woody Marks really succeeding there and yeah he might catch some balls out of the backfield from, from Miller Moss but like I think he has a chance to really succeed and there's also great talent behind him too like like Quentin Joyner the the sophomore back there I, I I think USC is a is a solid team I think they have questions um, but I think both of these teams have genuine questions uh, on their fronts right now I I will take Wisconsin to to win this one, but I think it's a question mark. Um, I think Wisconsin is going to beat Purdue at home. Uh, one, because Wisconsin just like doesn't lose to Purdue. <laughs> and Purdue might be the worst team in the Big Ten this year. Uh, I think they're they're gonna be pretty bad. Um, Rutgers. I think that is another win for Wisconsin. I, I think we're looking at Wisconsin rattling off some wins here and building some big momentum for for all that's worth for me pouring a lot of cold water on, on the Bama of it all. We're looking at me saying Wisconsin is going to start the season. One, two, three, four, five, and one. That's pretty dang good. Uh, getting, getting five wins before October 15th. Rutgers, I maybe would have casted more doubt on this after... Um, or before Muhammad Toure got injured for Rutgers, but he, he, he at linebacker who his season is over already for Rutgers is a huge part of what they do. And I certainly have doubts about Wisconsin's ability writ large because of it's, it's defensive line in, in particular. Um, but I think Mo Toure is a huge part 
of what Rutgers does. And I also am not totally buying the hype on Rutgers. I, I have come back around on this where I think some of the hype on Rutgers is built into the fact that Rutgers just has an easier schedule, but it's not really a, a much better team than it was a year ago. I, I think we're, we're going to see Rutgers win number tick up because they don't have to play the gauntlet of Ohio state, Penn state, Michigan, that this team has had to play every single season. Um, so, so this is a sneaky team that I think is going to rack up some wins, but I still think Wisconsin is a better team on the field than, than Rutgers is. I'm, I'm going to give uh, Wisconsin that win. Uh, I think Wisconsin will win at Northwestern. I think there's real hangover coming for Northwestern, which had a weird, weird, weird year last year. Um, but now when you have somebody transferring out of your quarterback room to go be the backup at Iowa guy who may have been your starting quarterback, I, I, I just don't think Northwestern has its act together in, in college football in 2024. Um, you're not playing at a real facility. I don't, I don't know what that's going to look like. You're playing on a practice field. I think that's rough for, for the Wildcats. Um, I am going to pick Wisconsin to then lose back to back games, uh, hosting Penn state and playing at Iowa hosting Penn state. I think that they lose and I don't like it, but this team has a lot of talent on defense that I find hard to believe that Wisconsin is going to have its act together enough to overcome yes this team lost some big time pass rushers in uh the nfl draft yes they lost chop robinson um as a first round pick yes you lost adisa isaac as a third round pick but behind them you have players like danny dennis sutton uh who is a former five-star recruit you have abdul carter who is a standout linebacker moving to defensive end um I think this is good. I, I like their hire of Tom Allen at defensive coordinator. I think that's going to make them even better. I, I think that Penn State defense is good. And I think the key to beating Drew Aller is to put pressure on him. Um, I think Drew Aller, the, the Penn State quarterback, is nowhere near as good a quarterback if you can get pressure on him. And I do not trust this Wisconsin football defensive front to be able to get pressure on Drew Aller. I, I, I don't. I don't think this defensive line can can do it. I don't think they can generate enough pressure. And so I think he might carve you up a little bit. Um, I'm going to say that Wisconsin loses at Iowa because I am not in the business of predicting wins <laughs> over Iowa because I've been burned by that um, far, far, far too many times. Um, and that leads me to say, I also think Wisconsin's going to lose hosting Oregon. That is a team that is a bona, bona, bona fide national title title contender with unlimited gobs of money until Phil Knight dies. And I, I am not in the business of, of betting a, a Wisconsin team that barely made a bowl last year to beat an Oregon team that, yeah, missed out on the playoff, but like maybe, maybe was the fourth best team in the country anyway. Maybe. I I don't know. So so you're going into the last two weeks of the season after winning your, your non-con games over Western Michigan and South Dakota, losing to Bama, then rattling off one, two, three, four straight wins. So you at least got yourself to bowl eligibility with six wins. Losing then one, two, three straight. And then you got to play Nebraska and Minnesota. I think they win both of those games. But I will say that I think that is the ceiling for this team is winning eight. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the ceiling is nine. The Vegas win total is six and a half. Maybe the ceiling is nine in a world where you 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 get that game at Iowa. Um, I am not sure where Rutgers is or Rutgers where Nebraska is going to get its running game from this season. I, I think there is a sentiment about, among Nebraska fans that as long as they can clean up their fumble luck, which truly 
they they might regress enough back up with their awful fumble luck um, to be able to get some teams like Wisconsin and get themselves on the right side of bowl eligibility. Um, but I don't know how they are they are going to decide who runs the ball because they had a bunch of like mediocre guys who dropped the ball last year. Um, Dylan Rayola at starting quarterback for Nebraska. I think he has a lot of talent, but I, I am still in wait and see mode. I don't think Matt rule did a great job of coaching them out of close game situations last year, including in Madison, Minnesota, I think is going to be bad. I don't think it's the worst team in the big 10. I don't, I don't think it's particularly close. I think that's Northwestern Purdue. Mm, I guess you can make an argument for UCLA or Washington even. Um, but I, I think Wisconsin is going to be markedly better than, than Minnesota this season still, even, even by a step. And, and maybe that's uh, saying too much because I, man, PJ Fleck gets his guys up for the, that game all the time to where that game still does make me nervous. I don't, I don't look at that like a true coin flip game, but I don't think I look at it better than 75, 25 for, for, for Wisconsin. Um, so I, I think Wisconsin's ceiling is probably nine wins. And I think that's even optimistic considering that I, I think a few weeks ago I was saying Wisconsin's ceiling was eight. I, I, I may be drinking the Kool-Aid a little bit <laughs> um, a, as I look at it, but that's because I've seen some things like I think the Iowa offense is going to be really bad again, like really bad again, maybe worse uh, because I don't think they have any idea what they're doing. I <laughs> Some, somehow they, they haven't figured anything out. Um, maybe I'm wrong about USC. Maybe Wisconsin does lose that game. I think there's a real good shot at that. I think that seven and eight come up a lot more often than six does. So if you have certain inclinations to do something about that number. That's me, but also I don't partake, partake in those activities. So um, take my advice with a grain of salt. But that's how I see it. That is how I see the Wisconsin Badger season shaking out. And it begins tonight, probably as you're listening to this less than 12 hours from now. How very, very, very exciting. Uh, and that is going to do it for today's episode of the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Thank you so much for listening all week to this like basically big Wisconsin football mega preview week. I'm um, really looking forward to it. We will likely be back in your feed Monday morning uh, with an episode previewing a bit of the Green Bay Packers season. If we are not back in your feed Monday morning, uh, we'll be back sometime on Tuesday after I return from vacation late on Monday, uh, sometime on Tuesday, because I don't know if I am going to be attending media availability um for the wisconsin badgers football team on tuesday morning depending on when that is scheduled after the labor day holiday uh but hey thank you very much for listening this week i've been your host kendrick sembris i cover the wisconsin badgers for athlon sports you can find me on the website formerly known as twitter at scani six pack for the latest updates in wisconsin sports or yours truly at kendrick stumbris while you're here leave a review leave a subscribe Watch us on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty Six Pack. Hit the comments. Tell me, what do you think Wisconsin's record is going to be? Am I, am I being too brash? Am I being too brash about Wisconsin's chances in, in, in these big games against these big-time opponents? Am I wrong? Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me why I'm wrong. Um, but until, oh, man, until after jump around on Wisconsin.